851, turn right, heading 180. Hello everyone, welcome to DJ's Aviation. The Boeing 747, an iconic aircraft, better known to most as the Queen of the Skies. It's a four-engine beast, which has pioneered air travel for decades now. But, how did the Boeing 747 change air travel? In today's video, I'll be exploring just that. The Boeing 747 is one of those aircraft which even someone who isn't interested in aviation could certainly pick out on the ground or in the sky. Its iconic shape took the world by storm and paved the way for a new generation of aircraft. Multiple things made the 747 what it is today, and have given it an everlasting legacy. For example, there's the work that went into building the very first 747, the service, ferrying the space shuttle, the freighter opportunities, moving the presidents, the first true wide body, the upgrading of airports, the upper deck, the range, the stairs, and so much more. So buckle up and enjoy a deep insight on why the Boeing 747 changed the aviation industry forever. We begin our journey in the 1960s, when the famous Joe Sutter, who unfortunately has now passed away, led an engineering team which helped to design the very first Boeing 747. This is where the Incredibles nickname was formed. The Incredibles comprised of a team that helped bring the Boeing 747 to life. It took 29 months from the conception to the rollout of the first 747, and to this day it's noted as a staggering achievement and a testament to Joe's incredible determination. The team wasn't a small team either. It featured thousands upon thousands of individuals who all played an absolutely pivotal role in getting the Boeing 747 up in the skies. And by the time the first 747 took off in February of 1969, it was already becoming one of the most talked about airliners and one of great interest from almost every single airline. The 747 entered service a year later with now the defunct Pan Am and operated a flight from New York to London. After the first flight with Pan Am was completed, the speed of production increased as best as it could, with orders flowing in from other airlines who wanted to do the same as Pan Am. It wasn't only airlines and those within the aviation industry that were keen on the Boeing 747, it was also the passengers as well. The love for the Boeing 747 was immediate with so many travellers. It had a second deck, something not seen before, and also had that iconic hump, which is what has made the Boeing 747 so widely recognisable. Mock-ups that Boeing provided of the Boeing 747 interior was on another level and quite literally made any traveller extremely excited to fly. Again, it brought a whole new level of luxury to air travel. Something that in economy you could say we've moved away from partially, with the exceptional service shifting to first class and business. On the 747, there was none of this no-frill service, which is now common on low-cost carriers. There was no concern of how many seats you could fit in. It was all about luxury, and the seats that featured on the 747 were the height of luxury. And really, when you do think about it, they weren't really seats, more like smaller armchairs that you'd actually find in a living room. The Boeing 747 also pioneered the design of long-haul travel within the cabin by splitting up passengers and the toilets, and we really do appreciate them for doing this. Almost half a century down the line, these seemingly small decisions back in the day have been applied throughout all planes. This all contributed to the overall appeal for the Boeing 747 in the public eyes. Next, it's the upgrading of airports. While I know for me at least, any sort of construction is annoying as it simply means you have to take alternate routes or are in turn held up. But the Boeing 747 caused mass airport upgrades simply because of its size. When comparing it to the 707s and even the DC-8s, the 747 was huge. In most recent times, a perfect example is what the A380 has done to airports that previously couldn't handle an aircraft that big. It caused multiple taxiway upgrades, gate upgrades, and also changes within the terminal. Well, if we track back to the 1970s, essentially the same thing happened for the Boeing 747. The capacity of the 747 was so huge, it meant that more people were passing through the boarding gates, airport lounges, check-in desks, and more. 
terminals and airports on a whole soon wouldn't be able to cope, and this led to the mass expansion of all these critical elements. The airport and the cabin configuration have led the way for nearly half a century now when you think about it. While inside the airport did notice huge changes, those on the ground also noticed big changes. The 747 meant that all airport equipment had to be upgraded or completely redesigned. Tugs, for instance, needed to get bigger to be able to pull the Queen of the Skies. Catering trucks were modified to reach the aircraft, and other devices like the refueling trucks and even the loading trucks were all redesigned to make way for the Boeing 747. The Boeing 747 also achieved multiple records and had incredible moments. For example, back in August of 1989, a Qantas Boeing 747-400 with the registration of VHOJA or Victor Hotel Oscar Juliet Alpha completed the world record for the longest ever commercial flight. The plane flew from London to Sydney without stopping in 20 hours, 9 minutes and 5 seconds. And this is another astonishing achievement. The flight in 1989 meant that the 747 had to minimise weight and take on a high density fuel which was classed as being special. The jet only carried 23 people including crew members but still did manage to complete that flight. Other remarkable events took place in 1974 when the Boeing 747 carried the space shuttle for activities including the study of air turbulence. While looking hilarious now, seeing this in person, I can say, would have been truly incredible. On top of all of this, the 747 is used to transport the President of the United States as Air Force One, and really is the ultimate aircraft, with defense mechanisms and one astonishingly cool interior. Nowadays, the 747-8, the newer variant, is also used as a private jet for the incredibly rich and similar to Air Force One. The interiors of these aircraft are light years ahead of anything else you'd find even in first class on a regular 747. Despite the 747 being known for its hump to carry passengers, it actually has also provided many carriers an excellent cargo alternative. Airlines like Eva Air, China Cargo Airlines, Cathay Pacific Cargo, Atlas Air, Asiana Airlines, UPS, Singapore Airlines Cargo, KLM Cargo, Korean Air, and so many more all have and are utilizing the Boeing 747-400F, and in recent times, the introduction of the Boeing 747-8F has meant for new possibilities in the freight industry, with Cargo Lux, UPS, and more, all jumping at the opportunity to proudly operate the Queen of the Skies. In recent times, UPS put their faith in the program with a sizable order for the jets to keep the production going long into the future. And I know we're all very thankful to UPS for completing this order. One of the biggest things the 747 did though is make travel more accessible. By the early 1970s, the Boeing 747 was leading the way for growth in air travel and tourism. The aircraft single-handedly allowed people to travel between the world far easier than we'd ever seen before. A fully loaded 747 meant the overall ticket cost was cut drastically, further making air travel not only affordable, but also more accessible and achievable. Ultimately, the Boeing 747 changed the industry forever, and despite airlines like Qantas, British Airways, KLM and more, all announcing that they will be retiring their 747 soon, it'll still be an aircraft that will live on for decades to come. While I've never had the pleasure of flying on the 747, it is something that one day I intend to do before they all disappear. Now I ask you, what has been your best memory involving a Boeing 747? It could be maybe a flight, your first flight, a family holiday, a spotting trip, or something else. I'm going to go over my favourite moment, because I think it's interesting to share our stories as a community. Now, what happened to me when I was in primary school, and I believe I was 7 or 8 years old, I was pulled out of school in the morning, and don't do this, I wouldn't advise it, but it was for something special, and essentially I was taken to the airport by my mum to go and see Wanala Dreaming, the 747 with Qantas, which was an entire flying art, take off. Now, I have that recorded somewhere, I have a lot of stuff from 2008, 2007 recorded and taken pictures of, but unfortunately, the hard drive which has all of that is completely corrupt and it will cost quite a lot to fix, so at this stage I won't be able to get anything to show you, but it was truly incredible to see the Wanala Dreaming, and it's something I still remember to this day. 
If you enjoyed this video, feel free to drop it a like, and if you're new to the channel, of course, the subscribe button is always there. I'd like to thank you very much for your continued support as we close in on the whopping 100,000 mark. Instead of finishing the video uh, with my very standard and basic outro, I want to finish on this quote, one that I think represents the Boeing 747, especially during its peak, absolutely perfectly. The Boeing 747 is a commuter train of the global village. Thank you for watching. And we'll fly.